Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Zahid Bashir from uh, Department of Commerce, University of Peshawar as a PhD scholar at Halle College of Commerce, University of Peshawar. Uh, we have our online session on uh, training on Startup 15. Uh, today is basically uh, the second day of uh, this training uh, week. And um, today is 6 March. 2024, time is 6.20 p.m. to 7.40 p.m. Uh, let's recap what we have done yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we have discussed uh, my basic introduction, uh, and we have also discussed the participants' introduction. Then we have discussed the course content, and we have uh, some uh, inclusion. Uh, we have some extension in the course content uh, based on the recommendation by uh, Mr. Ratanan Afsal. Uh, uh, and uh, we have also discussed the method of assessment. Uh, we have discussed uh, the software installation procedure, uh, and uh, we have discussed the basic environment and the <coughs> layout familiarity with setup. So that was uh, the part that we have covered uh, yesterday, and uh, the contents that we have discussed yesterday. Uh, although some of the parts uh, are included. In this, in these contents, like uh, I have included the quartile ARDL and MMQR, uh, along with the panel ARDL in panel data regression, also based on the recommendation of Adhanan Afsal. Uh, we have uh, these contents that we have discussed yesterday, and these contents will be covered throughout uh, our training program using setup. So uh, we have discussed uh, the screen layout and tools, the menu bar. Uh, today we will cover, uh, first of all, uh, how the output is basically located in a research paper uh, using Strata. Uh, I have exemplified some of uh, the research article that we would explore uh, using uh, uh, Google Scholar and other, uh, basically, you can say, uh, databases for searching these research papers. We have a useful resource like Stata Journal, and we will discuss the basic data management skills uh, using Stata. So these are basically the agenda for today's uh, part. Uh, let's uh, discuss how the outputs which are required using Stata, how they will look like uh, in an empirical study. Uh, how we would find out uh, that this paper is relevant to some uh, uh, to, uh, some some of the studies uh, relevant to which, which is conducted by Stata itself. Like for example, this is uh, a study which is uh, done uh, on the role of financial development and technological innovation towards sustainable development in Pakistan. So. Here, uh, IV is financial development, and technological innovation is also an independent variable, while sustainable development in Pakistan is the dependent variable. So this study is basically conducted by Fadim Hussain, Kashif Raza Abbasi, Akram Masood, Fadir Asma Suleiman, and Ilhan Asturad. These are the affiliations of those researchers. So, uh, we need to see how they have analyzed uh, these uh, variables, how they have uh, done the analysis part. So basically, they have uh, mentioned uh, in theoretical model and research design that how uh, the data was obtained, uh, which variables were dependent, which were independent. And they have also mentioned that they have applied the ARDL approach, which is also the part of our uh, stata uh, analysis. Uh, so we we uh, need to see how the data was extracted. They have covered the data from first quarter of 1990 to the fourth quarter of 2019. Uh, they they might have some uh, variables uh, like uh, they might have the consumption based emission. They might have territory based emission and some control variable also. Uh, how he has uh, specified the model, they have used the ARDL technique uh, to estimate this model. And it includes the co-integration testing as well as the other criteria. I will let you know 
uh, when I practically explore this model. So this is basically the criteria uh, that they have applied in applying the ARDL framework. Uh, so they need to get the data first from WDI, EIA, PGE, and GCA. They are basically the sources from where they have collected data. Then they have test the unit root testing like ADS, PPP, KPSS. These are basically the stationarity testing techniques. After this, they uh, have find out the lag length uh, for applying this model. Uh, and if they are uh, basically successful in uh, finding out the lag length, they have applied the ARDL bound test. So to ARDL bound test, they have further find out these things. So we don't need to worry about these things. Uh, this, this is basically the model, the ARDL model. Uh, they have applied, they have a set of variables here. Uh, you can see the modeling technique, model A, model B. Uh, I will let you know uh, in, in the coming uh, days when uh, we come to the ARDL approach, I will let you know how these models are created. Uh, the thing we need to see is what outputs they have generated using Stata. So using Stata, the first thing you are seeing there is the descriptive statistics. Uh, these indicates the mean, the median, the maximum, the minimum, standard deviation, scalars, kurtosis, jar, barra, and probability. Uh, the, these, these are the values uh, generated from uh, by considering these uh, important criteria for descriptive statistics. Uh, I would like to know, uh, I, I would like to tell you that uh, scalars, kurtosis, jar, barra, these are the techniques which are used for normality testing, whether the data is normal or not. Uh, while uh, the p value of jet bara, if it is uh, more than 0 0.05, it, it confirms that the data is normal. So in this case, uh, in case of CBE, data is normal. In case of PBE, data is normal. But in case of FD, the data is not normal because this value is less than 0 0.05. And uh, you, you can say EU value. Uh, which is uh, economic uncertainty. EU value is uh, up to 0 0.05. Uh, it, it may be acceptable for a normality of data. This value is less than 0 0.05. This value is less than 0 0.05. So these are not normal. Uh, while this value is uh, greater than 0 0.05. So this, this data is normal. Uh, while uh, we also indicate how much is the average value of each variable. So we compare these average values with some standardized values in order to see whether our average value is greater than uh, with some standardized value or not. So this table is basically generated using uh, uh, Stata. So I will let you know that the first thing that uh, you need to do with your data is descriptive statistics. Then you are seeing uh, here the unit group testing. Uh, here, uh, Argument picker, fully test, and Philip parent test. So you, you, you can see here uh, the unit root testing, although I will let you know how to interpret these values. But this is the second thing which, which you do with the time series analysis. Then they have an analyzed the bound test, which is basically the co integration test. Uh, this is also done uh, with the use of SETA. So uh, we will let uh, I will let you know how these values are created. Then you may have long run and short run uh, ARDL estimation. Uh, these, these are the short run estimates. These are the long term uh, estimates and, and how they are uh, created and how they are interpreted. I will let you know. So these are the tables which are basically required in case of time series analysis. And these are some graphical visualization. Uh, I will let you know how to create different types of graphs uh, using SETA. So you will find a lot of uh, papers, a, a lot of studies uh, that, that, that are using the SETA. For example, if, if you would like to search, uh, let's suppose, uh, I would like to search determinants of structural structure using SETA. Let's suppose I, I, I want to search uh, this variable uh, or this study. Uh, I need to search first the Google Scholar. Google Scholar. I need to search it first. Then I need to put what kind of paper or what kind of study uh, I am going to find out from there. Uh, you can find a lot of papers 
where this theta is being used. You can see here, uh, uh, this is the determinants of capital structure and zero. Uh, this, this study is uh, basically conducted using theta 10 version. Uh, we can see here the complete paper and what outputs are there using theta. Uh, they have mentioned in methodology section that uh, they have the panel data. In our previous paper, in this paper, the data was time series. Yes, this is the time series data. So when you have a time series data, your model may be different. And when you have panel data, your model may be different from the time series. So we may have different estimation techniques when considering different types of data. So first we need to decide which type of data we are going to use. Each type of data has its own pros and cons. So we need to see, uh, this is basically the panel data model where this is dependent variable and these are independent variable and this is constant term and this is error term and they are established this model using IT as a uh, subscript. So the first thing you are seeing here is basically the descriptive statistics. For each type of data, for each type of estimation, always remember the first thing uh, that you compute uh, from uh, any software or any data analysis software for estimation is basically the descriptive statistics. So in case of time series data, you have uh, estimated the descriptive statistic and as well as in case of panel data, you have also uh, considered descriptive statistic. And you can see here that uh, they have shown jar para along with probability value in case of time series. But in case of uh, panel data, jar para is not there, not, not the prob probability is not also there. They have only uh, mentioned the mean value of the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum value of different variables. So the first thing is always there as a descriptive statistic. Then we need to see what is the next. They have basically estimated panel data model based on fixed effect and random effect. One of the popular techniques using static panel. So th this is basically the estimation of fixed effect and random effect. And you can see here, uh, there are only two tables in this uh, uh, research paper. Uh, the, the first one was uh, descriptive statistic paper, and the second one was only uh, the regression table table, uh, regression table. So you, you can only see only two of the variable over here. So uh, you, you may find uh, some other studies like, uh, let's suppose I would like to search the impact of corporate governance on firm performance using SETA. So always remember when you would like to do some research, you would like to analyze some data using SETA, always try to search uh, the required number of tables uh, that were already done by someone else in someone uh, else study. For example, here the effect of corporate governance on the performance of listed deposit money banks in Nigeria. This study was done by SETA 11 version. We are using SETA 15. Uh, different peoples have the accessibility of different versions of SETA. So we can see here, we don't need to see all the table. We need to see what, what tables they have created. So you can see here, uh, this is the descriptive statistic table. They have extracted it from uh, SETA 11 output. Uh, you can see here uh, the correlation matrix table. Uh, actually, this is the second one that we should be uh, while doing analysis, whether we are using panel data analysis or whether we are using uh, the uh, time series analysis. We need to have uh, the second table as a correlation matrix table. And uh, you can see here the third one that is regression results. And they have extracted these results uh, using SETA 11 output. So uh, the, third, the third table is basically here the regression table. 
So you can find uh, many uh, of the research papers from here, like for example, this is Corporate Governess Mechanism and Firm Performance, evidence from Jordan. If we would like to see this paper, uh, we can see it there, like this. <clears throat> This is the model, and it is pooled OLS model. This is not panel model because uh, subscript IV is not there with any term. They have not mentioned subscript IV, so they might have used uh, pooled analysis. Uh, they have used the data between the range of uh, 2012 to 2017, and they have 16 companies in hand, and they might have pooled the data. Uh, they have not created the panel. So the first thing they have uh, done with the data is descriptive analysis. And uh, the next thing is correlation matrix. So always remember whenever you need to do uh, the SPSS or SPETA analysis, you always need to provide uh, the descriptive analysis first and second one is basically uh, the uh, correlation analysis and third one would be regression. And you may provide some, uh, you can say, assumptions tables or diagnostic tables as well in order to further explain your uh, analysis. Uh, let's let's have a look on determinants of FDI using Stata. Let's suppose uh, we need to have, uh, let's suppose we need to open this file on Google Scholar. This is uh, a, some kind of uh, macroeconomic study. I would like to show you how to open uh, this study. Let's suppose uh, this is the determinants of FDI in agriculture sector. So how they have used SETA, uh, they, 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 they have run the procedure using the application called SETA. So what, what is basically the output file when, when you are considering an uh, a ma ma macroeconomic study. So what, what are the output files we need to see? Uh, all right. Mr. Adnan Afzal has also shared a file using MMQR and uh, it could be, uh, yes, uh, Adnan Afzal, uh, you want to share something? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I have shared a paper with you. I want to uh, open this paper and please discuss uh, <coughs> in, uh, the technologies and methodologies discussed in this paper, please. You want to discuss this paper? I just want to open this paper and uh, consider the methodologies and techniques which have been used in this paper, please. All right, these, these are some uh, te uh, techniques which are being used. I need to find out whether these techniques are applied using SETA or not. Uh, I need to find out because the graphical representation of the data is somewhat uh, showing. Uh, this, is, this is what I want to say. Uh, uh, please scroll down, scroll up, please. Uh, this is this what is this is what I want to discuss. All right. Methodology uh, section, please. They have uh, collected it data. Be included. Yes, they have collected data. They have considered the preliminary analysis. Then they decide that uh, we need to have cross sectional dependence. Uh, if the cross sectional dependence is there, then we need to check the slope heterogeneity. And then we will consider the unit root test. And then Westerland and Padroni co integration test is applied. Uh, these are techniques which are used in uh, non-panel data. Uh, basically, when we have a panel data, we might have a long panel or we might have a short panel. In case of a long panel, we may have a uh, number of years, more than number of uh, our uh, uh, institutions or uh, individuals or uh, individual countries. So in that case, the unit road test is basically applicable in that kind of test data. But this procedure requires that we need to find out first the cross-sectional dependence. 
if it is confirmed, then you need to check the slow heterogeneity. Then you need to check the unit rule. And uh, in case of uh, after confirming the unit rule, you, you need to go the Wester Land and Padroni configuration. Then you apply the FM OLS, FE OLS, and DOLS. Then you apply the MMQR. I will explain uh, uh, this whole procedure step by step when I will uh, I will be in a position. Uh, to explain it using uh, Stata. So don't worry. Sure. I will explain it. This is the uh, addition in our report. So I was discussing about this paper also. Uh, let's uh, discuss it and then we will proceed further to the next part uh, of our analysis. So this is, this is basically the determinants of foreign direct investment in agriculture sector based on selected high income developing economies. Uh, they have considered the panel data of provincial based panel data. They didn't get the uh, country based uh, panel data, especially uh, in case of uh, China, uh, they have major uh, provinces, they have major provincial data. So they uh, try to analyze those data uh, by considering uh, their provinces. And you can also see there are some set of independent variable, the dependent variable. They have created the model. And it looks like a cross-sectional model because uh, there is only one subscript is here, which is indicated by I. You can see here the I subscript. It means it is a cross-sectional data. They have, uh, they have uh, collected this data based on provinces. Uh, in a particular point in time. So they have applied strata for the analysis purpose. Uh, in that case, they have uh, considered the descriptive analysis first, and then they have uh, considered the correlation analysis. Then they have uh, considered the regression analysis where you can see the random effect and the fixed effect. And these are the only table they have uh, applied uh, using strata. So it was very simple study. Uh, the one, the one which is uh, issued, uh, which is shared by uh, Mr. Radhanan uh, is a much complex study, and I will elaborate how uh, this has been conducted in some other day when uh, the relevant part will come. So we have covered the first part that how much output we needed to explore using Stata most commonly. Uh, if we would uh, summarize here as a part of the discussion, uh, what outputs we are really needing here? We really needing we really needed uh, correlation. We really needed in case of cross sectional studies. In case of time series. And in case of panel data, we might have some additional parts. We might have some uh, graphical representation. We might have uh, some co-integration, unit root testers, and some uh, diagnostic. But most commonly, these are the key things which are uh, uh, which are available in each type of data. Uh, so these, this is the conclusion of this part. So let's have a uh, look on Stata Journal. It is the renowned journal which is supporting uh, the uh, Stata. Uh, uh, this journal basically issues uh, some latest techniques, some latest, uh, uh, you can say, commands which are being used by Stata community. Uh, they might have uh, the recent publications on recent techniques. If you are you are interested, if you are interested in uh, doing some research on latest tools and techniques which are being applied uh, by Strata community, you should uh, consider this journal. They have a lot of publications here uh, where they normally issue uh, some recent development in Strata. Whatever uh, the recent development you see in Strata, uh, whatever uh, new commands or new uh, techniques you find in Strata, they will be available here. Like you can say, uh, here, uh, they have developed a staking generalization and machine learning in Stata. 
uh, we uh, came to know uh, previously that machine learning is basically done in R programming, but you can also do machine learning in Stata. So they have developed some system, some commands, uh, some uh, techniques that you can apply uh, as a machine learning tool in Stata. They have uh, different types of approaches to deal with different types of scenarios. So uh, they have also uh, some addition with ARDL model. Uh, they have discussed the estimating autoregressive uh, distributed lag and equilibrium uh, correction model. So uh, using this journal, you can find out which technique is latest and how you can apply that technique if you read uh, any of the interesting parts. Uh, for example, I would like to find out some development uh, using panel data. Let's go. They, might, they may have some something for panel data. Uh, they, they are mentioning that uh, they have these things for uh, panel data, like dynamic panel data model. They have Lagrange multiplied as for mean stationary assumption. This is something uh, new because it is published on 2023. Uh, they have also mentioned uh, XP, num, f, fat command they have used for common factors in time series and panel data models. Uh, so they, they have a lot of development uh, in your required domain, in your required uh, type of data. You can use uh, these commands, but you may need to have a basic understanding of the basic commands first. When you uh, master the basic techniques and basic commands, you can go for much more advanced techniques using Stata. So uh, you, you, you can see here, you can see here uh, uh, it as a useful resource for Stata. Always remember that whenever you would like to find out uh, the latest techniques uh, for applying using Stata, you, you must refer to this website. So let's come towards the content, the one of the most important content from our, our, our overall contents of Stata 15. Let's focus on data management, the basic data management uh, techniques using Stata. So I have uh, I have uh, consulted a number of websites. I have consulted uh, I have consulted uh, a number of books, a number of references, and uh, I have compiled a list of uh, basic management tools, basic data management tools that you need to apply, that you need to learn to master the art of data analysis using Stata. So these are some uh, basic tools that you need to understand. So let's start uh, the Stata 15. Uh, I have shared with you Stata 15 file. Uh, you may need to open the file like this. You, you, you need to open the Stata 64 file. It is ready to use. You don't need to install uh, uh, the Stata version. Uh, you just need to double click this file and it will be open like this. You just need to click on OK and you can use it. Now, uh, what is the first thing that we can do as a basic data management tool using Stata? The first command is system use or sys use command. Uh, the sys use command loads a specific data format data set uh, that was shipped with Stata. Uh, always remember there are some files which are which are already saved in the memory of Stata. When you uh, have the Stata, some files are there. Like you can see here, auto.dta file. It is already here. It is a data set basically. When you have a Stata, you install Stata. This file is here uh, as a basic data set file. So when you would like to see uh, a specific file using Stata, you can use sysuse command. So how can we apply here? Uh, you just need to uh, write sysuse auto. <laughs> so in the command window, I just need to write sysuse auto. That's this one, sysuse auto. It means it will indicate me 
the file which is already saved and which is already saved in the memory of setup. So when I click uh, sysuse auto, it indicates me uh, a number of variables on the right side. You can see here. And you can also verify from the data editor uh, about the data set which is loaded there. So we are basically using uh, already saved file in the memory of the setup. So whenever you are going to use already saved file in Scatter, you can simply use the sysuse command. So we need to go back. This is the first file that uh, we can we can use. This is the first command that we can use in order to find out a system saved file. Next command command is basically this type command. It shows you basic information about Scatter file. As you can see, it tells the number of observation in the file and number of variable, number of variable and more. So you just need to write uh, this type here. C -E -X -C -R -I -D -E. You just need to write it. It will show you uh, how many variables do you have, what are the variable type, whether it is string variable or it is integer variable or numeric variable. You can see here. Uh, the storage type, the display format, and the variable label also. Uh, what 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 do we mean by make? Make is basically the make of a model. Like uh, uh, in case of our automobile industry, uh, the make uh, of the model of the car, whether it is from Mehran brand or whether it is from Suzuki brand, whether it is from uh, Honda brand, uh, we, we can also indicate uh, uh, the variable level of the different variable also. So from describe command, we can see uh, the describe uh, or the description of the variable. One thing uh, that is most important, I would like to let you know, if you uh, would like to see uh, the description of a particular variable, just write describe and uh, simply click that variable and click enter. And it will indicate the description of that particular variable. You can you can do this uh, with more than one also. Uh, describe size MPG REP and click enter, and you will see the description of uh, those variables which are provided there. Uh, but if you write describe without uh, mentioning any variable uh, and just click enter, it will display the description of all the variables which are available in that data set. So this, this is basically the described uh, variable purpose. Next is, uh, next is the code book command. Code book is basically created when you need to have a reference file uh, regarding uh, the measurement of your variables in your data file. So how your variable is measured, uh, it is basically placed in the code book. So you simply need to write code book. You just need to write here. Uh, enter, and it will display variable wise how different variables are coded. You can see here the make variable. Uh, there is no missing value. There are 74 values in here and nothing is missing here. Uh, and these 74 values are uh, basically uh, the unique values. This variable is string and they have uh, shown uh, that they have the make of their cars or automobiles with these uh, basically companies with CAD, the Willy, Dodge, Magnum, Mars, XR7, Pond, Catalina. So these are basically the making of those cars. Uh, you can also see the price, how the price is measured. Uh, you can see there are 74 values and nothing is missing because zero is missing here. <clears throat> the range of the values is here. They mean the standard deviation values is here and they have also created the percentile values. Uh, in the same way, you can see the code book uh, of other values too. Uh, you can see here, for example, rep 78. Uh, rep 78 basically indicate the range 
uh, between one and five. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, with the value of one, two uh, values are indicated. With value two, eight, uh, eight basically uh, values are indicated. With the identification key, 30 values are indicated and so on. Uh, there are five missing values in the data uh, out of 74. So uh, you, you can see the code book of different variables here. So it will indicate how a variable is uh, <clears throat> labeled, like you can see here, uh, the variable forum. Uh, it is measured using uh, binary coding, where zero indicates domestic and one indicates foreign. So you, you, you can see that this variable is indicated by 0, 1. So whenever you need to see that how uh, a particular variable is basically uh, measured or how a particular variable is basically indicated in your data set, you, you need to see its code work. Like uh, from headroom, it is coded with these values. There are four values which are coded by 1.5. There are 13 values which is which are coded by 2. There are 14 values which are coded by 2.5 and so on. 